everybody. Uh, it's Thursday morning around 7.30 in the morning. It's August 24th and uh, thanks for coming along with me. Uh, we're in the bush. We're uh, in the woods of Belleville Cove and I'm here this morning to do some firewood. Now I'm cutting down some trees so this will be not this winter's coming firewood. Uh, it'll be the firewood for next year. Uh, the firewood for this year I've already got cut down. Uh, you saw me draw it drive by the pile there. That was cut down last uh, August of last year. So what we do is we, uh, I come in and I cut down a bunch of trees and I leave them there in the forest and I leave the limbs and the leaves and everything on there and the idea is uh, once they're cut down completely off the stump and laid down on the ground the leaves will you know suck out some of the sap and stuff and hopefully uh, make those trees dry a little more for when they're processed later on this winter so I'll cut down approximately uh, I, I burned approximately five we'll say five cores of uh, wood per winter and we've pretty much got it guessed at about 12 trees will make uh, five cords of wood so I came in yesterday morning and I cut eight trees down and I'll cut some for myself and my uncle we're the only ones now that burn uh, burn wood um, so yesterday I come in and I cut eight trees down uh, hopefully this morning I'll cut eight more trees and I'll come in tomorrow morning and hopefully finish up we'll I'll cut down about 25 trees or so uh, there's different uh, types of wood. We're cutting down maple uh, and birch and some other stuff too. And like I say, I'll chop those down, leave them there, and then later on this winter, whenever I get a chance, I'll come in with the tractor and the winch and cut all the limbs off, the smaller limbs, and tow them out and get that ready. So I wanna, want you to check out a uh, little incident I had yesterday. Never a dull moment in the, in the woods when you're logging. It's really dangerous and uh, I try to keep safe as best as I can. I'm always careful. I always think about what I'm doing. Uh, ever since I was really young, uh, coming in the woods with my dad and my uncle, they, there was no compromise on safety. Uh, you always wear your safety gear and you never take a chance on anything. So <clears throat> this is what happened yesterday. If you can see here, it looks like the tree's growing a chainsaw bar. <laughs> so this is a birch tree. And this was my mistake, but uh, I cut the notch for the tree. <clears throat> I cut the notch for the tree a little bit too thick. And so when I went around to uh, you can see the bar has been broken off there. <clears throat> when I went around to cut it so that it would fall this way, it decided to fall that way. So it pinched the bar. And anyway, so I got my other chainsaw and uh, cut it, but it wouldn't, uh, tried to make it fall that way anyway. There's the... There's the bar. It's probably going to stay there. I'll leave it there. I have spare bars and stuff. So I cut it with my other chainsaw. I always bring a spare chainsaw. So I cut it on this side and it fell and it started to roll. And trees are unpredictable. You have to sort of, uh, you got to sort of aim them the way you want them to fall. And usually they'll fall uh, the way you're notching them. You make a hinge in the tree and they'll fall where they're supposed to. But sometimes they don't. So you get out of the way and you sort of let them fall where they may. This guy decided to fall some other way. So the chainsaw, my first chainsaw was stuck and it rolled. If you can see there, it rolled. Uh, I had to do. A, I had to make another cut with my second chainsaw, and it rolled around and onto the saw. So uh, sometimes you can write off a saw. Now chainsaws nowadays are a good 800 bucks or so, and uh, you don't want to do that if you can avoid it. So it rolled 
It rolled onto itself and down onto the chainsaw, broke the bar and broke the brake. So luckily it only broke the handle of the brake and the bar. I have bars and chains and I yesterday I ordered a uh, uh, an extra uh, brake handle. So I have three chainsaws and it's that's why it's good to have spare chainsaws. I have three saws and uh, when you come in the woods you always bring a spare saw in case you get stuck. And so this morning um, I have my spare saw and I have another saw in case I get stuck like this. So I still, I'm still operational. Other than that, I would be stuck. <laughs> so that's what can happen pretty quick. So uh, working in the woods is really dangerous, but you know, I never compromise safety. I always tell Robin where I'm coming, uh, when she should expect me to come back. Matt, Matt's home, He'll, he knows where I am. Uh, they know when I'm coming back. I have a cell phone and you really shouldn't be here by yourself. You really should have a partner, but that's not always possible. So I'm really careful. I take my time and uh, when the tree's falling, I get out of the way. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this for years and I was taught by the best. So uh, there's no compromise in safety. So he here we have a couple of birch trees and here's the logging road. Comes down here, goes down that way. And I want to widen up this logging road because I'll be back here doing some more logging, you know, in years to come. There's plenty, plenty of firewood here. <clears throat> and the sun, you know, comes up in the uh, eastern sky, I guess, and then falls to the west. So the more, this is quite muddy, as you can see. Uh, the more trees I cut on that side of the road, the more sunlight will hit the road and dry it off. So, and that's a good thing. So I got a couple of birch trees here and they're right by the road. So I want to cut them down. So the idea is there's no, not too many trees behind it. There's kind of a hole. I'm going to try to notch them up down here and get that little guy to fall down there. And then I'll get that big guy to fall beside it. That's the plan anyway.
You see when that tree fell, uh, there was still a sliver of bark uh, holding on to it. So, and I cut it after. What's interesting about trees is if you don't cut, if you don't cut that little, that little piece of bark that's still holding on to the tree, the sap will, that tree will still live. So it won't dry out. I'll come here in the fall and the leaves will still be, you know, living and stuff. And there'll still be uh, the tree sap uh, flowing through that tree. So kind of interesting. You got to make sure it's completely cut from the stump so it'll uh, start drying.
So there's a perfect example of what I was talking about. <clears throat> I wanted to get that tree to fall behind me. And it had a lot of lean and maybe a few branches. Usually the branches grow where the sunlight goes, so into the road where there's an empty space. So anyway, I tried to wedge it and make it fall that way. That's where I originally wanted to fall, but it fell this way, so that's how it goes. So you just got to be careful and be prepared. It's getting pretty hot out here. Uh, it's 8.30, I think, in the morning. I try not to stay too late. Uh, this is the middle of summer, and it's really hot cutting down trees, so I'll cut, you know, seven or eight trees, and I'll go home and come back early tomorrow morning. Got the trusty old ATV back there. TRX 250. Uh, I come in into the woods. I mean, I'm only five or six kilometers from home. It saves my truck from be getting beaten up in the back roads. And also, I got to come into some logging roads. So I just throw a crate on the back of the ATV there and <coughs> put my chainsaw and my uh, gas and stuff and come in here, cut some trees, and go home. And I also, I, you got to park it out of the way. So trees are really tall. They're liable to fall on stuff. So when you're in the woods with a tractor or an ATV or anything, you park that thing well out of the way. The last thing you want is a tree to come down on your machinery. So we're going to cut two or three more and uh, head back to the house. I was talking about, you know, clearing the trees beside the logging road so that the sun can hit the road and dry it up for, you know, for the future. You have a nice road. Uh, here's a bunch of birch trees I'm going to cut there at the right side of the logging road where the sun shines. Now where I just cut a bunch of trees, two or three trees, you can see down the way. See how lit up that is? That road, that's, it, the sky's opening up onto that road there. Gonna dry it up. Morning everybody. It's Friday morning and I just came from the woods. I've got my 25 trees down for my firewood for next year. Got, uh, got some maple wood, birch wood, and some beech wood. So 25 trees down and uh, we're done. It's pretty hot, so I'm glad to be done. So uh, I just, uh, every time I go in the woods with the uh, ATV there on the way back, I stop into uh, this spot for a uh, drink of water. And it's a secret undisclosed location. Um, in French, we call it La Souche Sagarva. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really special place for me. Um, way back when, uh, we were kids, uh, my dad and my uncles, we, they'd get us up uh, before, before dawn on uh, Easter morning to get Easter water. And uh, the story goes, you know, if you get up early on Easter morning before the sun comes up around six in the morning and go out to this spring, this is a spring, a uh, water spring, uh, if you collect it and keep it, it'll never go bad. Like some water will go bad after a while. If you pour water out of a tap into something, it goes bad after a while. So apparently this is, it's like holy water. So we did that as uh, you know, when we were young and stuff and pretty much, I think who started the, the tradition was my uncle John and uh, we all miss uncle John. Uh, so whenever this, um, Every Easter, we, uh, the family and friends, we gather here at the, at the, at the spring and uh, we come collect some holy water, some Easter water, we call it. And uh, that's a yearly tradition and uh, I always remember my Uncle John when we do that. So I got my old Timmy's cup. Uh, there is a community cup when you come here. I'll show you what it is. It's a coconut. <laughs> Yeah, you know, with all the COVID and stuff, I'm not going to drink out of that. That's, that's why I brought my coffee this morning, so I'm going to rinse that out and uh, take a drink out of it. So this is what it looks like. Here's the spring. And it's funny how warm it is outside, like now when that spring is uh, really cold and it's, well, it's great water. A uh, guy I know, his wife works at a water testing facility locally. And just for shits and giggles, he brought the, a sample of water to his wife to have it tested and it tested zero. So actually tested I think a little less than zero which means it has no impurities whatsoever. So it's perfectly good spring water. Oh, 
that's great water. Thanks for watching, and uh, that was uh, this morning's adventure. See you later. God bless.